We'll kick off our exploration of Fastlane with a quick flyover of the ways that we interact with the developer portal and App Store Connect. No developer and no app is an island. As developers, it's quite natural to think in code-centric terms as we grow our app directly in Xcode. But in reality, from the very first moment that we create an iOS app up to and even past the point that we deliver it to the App Store for sale, we're continually interacting with Apple's vast App Store ecosystem. We often do this explicitly, like when we distribute an app for beta testing with TestFlight or submit it to App Store Connect for sale. But we also do this implicitly, like every time we run an app in Xcode silently code signs it for us, and every time we run it on one of our iOS devices or in a simulator, where we rely on implicitly generated provisioning profiles to make this possible. Now this course is all about streamlining and improving our many interactions with the App Store ecosystem and beyond. And even more, it's all about learning how you can use Fastlane to improve your own specific development processes. And so, I'd like to start things off with a challenge for you. Now this first challenge isn't going to involve any coding, but it's every bit as important as the code challenges you face throughout the remainder of this course. So here's your challenge. Envision an app, either one you've delivered to the App Store already, or maybe that next great app idea you've got right now. Take a moment to add up all the ways you'll interact with the App Store ecosystem from the time you create it first until it's submitted to the App Store, and make a list of them. Ready? Go ahead and pause the video now and drop your list. When you're done, resume the video and we'll compare them. I'll see you on the other side. All right, welcome back. Let's take a look at this. My list starts at the beginning. Well, actually even before an app itself begins. Don't worry, there's no birds or bees involved here. But even before a single line of project code gets created, we first sign up with Apple Developer Program. And in the process, we ensure that we have a unique Apple ID. Already at this early point, we've taken our first step inside the vast Apple development ecosystem as we've created an Apple ID that will form the basis of our app's dev portal and app store life cycles. Next, we create an Xcode project for that next great app. To complete this process, our app requires a bundle ID, that's a unique identifier, and it's linked to a development team, even if that's just a mighty team of one. And at the same time, Xcode silently ensures that we have the development code signing assets that we'll need to be able to build and run our apps. Now, if you're part of a team, more things happen as multiple people begin working on a project. Each developer add to the team brings new certificates and devices that need to be provisioned. Next, as you add capabilities like MapKit or CloudKit to your app, Xcode once again silently registers those with the developer portal and updates your app's entitlements. When you're ready to begin testing your app, whether you use TestFlight or a third-party service, you'll need distribution profiles, which by default, Xcode handles on your behalf once again. You'll also need to create and upload a codesign.ipa file, and of course, you also have to sign up and manage testers for your app. All these steps are deeply intertwined with the App Store ecosystem. Next, as you prepare to submit your app to the App Store, several new things come into play. Is your app metadata complete in all the languages you support? Does it violate any App Store policies? Have you created and framed all your screenshots, one for each screenshot type, multiplied by devices you'll support, and multiplied again for every language you'll support? Okay, finally, it's time to submit your app for sale. You put in your lucky pocket protector, upload or select an archive file, complete several more point and click and wait intensive processes, maybe rub your lucky rabbit's foot, and you think you're happy as thoughts. Hopefully, your app's immediately approved, but it might not be. And if it's not, rinse, repeat, until you reach app nirvana. Now we could go on, but that's probably a good start. And needless to say, our iOS development lives are deeply and thoroughly intertwined with the developer portal and App Store Connect. Not only are many of these interactions time intensive, they also make or break the success of our app itself. There's some bad news here, and that's that some of the most important of these interactions, especially those relating to final submission, are very easy to rush through. And if you let this happen, it can have a very negative impact on the success of your app sales. But here's the good news. Fastlane is designed specifically to streamline and improve each interaction we have with the App Store ecosystem. 
As this course proceeds, we're going to transform each point of interaction from a manual, ad hoc, error-prone process into an automated, consistent workflow you can initiate with a single command. Fastlane is designed to improve each phase of the iOS app development process, and we'll reflect that in this course. We'll begin in sections one and two by seeing how Fastlane streamlines the initial iOS app development workflow. Next, in section three, we'll focus on improving beta build, distribution, and testing workflows. Section four will focus on civilizing the process of submitting your app and all of its accompanying assets for App Store approval. And finally, in our closing section five, we're going to step beyond the App Store ecosystem and learn how Fastlane can add consistency and efficiency to your core team workflows all across the board. So as you can see, Fastlane is an ambitious tool and we'll have a lot to cover. We're going to get underway in the next section with a quick flyover of Fastlane. I'll see you there.